Hello and welcome to my City Skylines YouTube, in which I am going to build a city. So let me pick one. Yeah, that'll probably do. If it'll ever load. All right, we have a perfect kilometer of land with highway connections on both sides. Thank God someone thought ahead. And we have this nice river in the middle, which looks absolutely beautiful. Oh, this would make great waterfront property, but unfortunately it's at the bottom of a 70 foot ravine. All right, well, we have infinite money, so we can deal with this. Also, luckily, we have no such thing as highway engineering standards, so which is good because we only have access to one kind of road. Perfect. Giant bridge in seconds. No thought to it. Let's figure out zoning. Put some low residential. Maybe I want some higher density mixed use next to the road. Oh, wait. Our zoning code's from the 60s. We don't have that. Okay, let's try thinking about the water system. Luckily, we have incredibly pure water, so we don't need any kind of filtration. And luckily, there's no environmental laws, so we can just dump the poop in the water. And gravity is not a thing, so we can just run the pipes anywhere. Uh, nor is, you know, any kind of tunneling methods. We don't need to cut and cover. We can just put them anywhere. Now we'll plop down the world's tiniest coal power plant and uh, we'll deliver high tension power at 22,000 volts directly to a tiny residential area. Plop down the world's tiniest landfill, build a clinic, a municipally owned crematorium, a fire station, a police station, a school, a high school. This is an immersive simulation. So here are the houses where the people live. Maybe we should give them a park or something. So, uh, what happened to his house? P people live there. What happened to it? Did they get compensated? Apparently not, because that was free for two. Like, uh, people lived there. there. There were people there. Are they out on the streets? Maybe we should look at some policies to see if we can alleviate this. Ah, yes, we can ban pets. We can boost education through some abstract manner. We can have harsh prison sentences. We can raise taxes. Taxes on what? Property? Income? What are we talking about? Maybe we can look at our budget. Here's our income. We don't know what it's from. They're just giving us money. What is this? All right. I'm dead and tired of this. This is not how cities are built. Let's show them how it's done. In the real world, there is no mayor slash god creating cities from scratch. Cities are created through a messy process involving thousands of individuals with different goals and interests, many of which conflict with each other. At least here in the States, planning departments are mostly hobbled by city councils and private interests, and growth is haphazard and unplanned. So to get the most realistic city in this series, we're going to add a factor never seen before in a City of Skyline series. Time. Now in keeping with that theme, we're going to start right at the beginning, which is a couple hundred thousand years ago. We're going to talk about some geography and some hydrology. Now, uh, in City of Skylines, most rivers look like this. I had to say, a deep channel with steep banks. This is almost never the case, especially in urban areas. This is sometimes the case, you know, in a canyon or somewhere near the source of a river. But especially for wide, broad, and deep rivers, they look like this. 
which is a shallow channel with floodplains on both sides. Now the reason for this is that water flows fairly quickly in the main channel but of course sometimes it rains and that alters the level of the main channel. Sometimes it rains enough that it overflows its banks. Now the actual water that is now flowing through the floodplain is moving very slowly but it has a lot of stuff in it. It has dirt, it has poop, it has dead bodies, it has whatever fell in the river, you know, uh, and wasn't properly weighted down with cement shoes or whatever. So this stuff falls to the ground on the floodplain and that slowly raises the level of the floodplain over a very long period of time. Now when this process began, uh, sea levels were much lower than they are now. So what we're looking at in this episode, and what I'm doing on the screen in front of you, is trying to reflect a couple hundred thousand years of sedimentation, which has made a very wide and flat area, which is very convenient for building on. Uh, sometimes people complain, you know, why did you build in the floodplain? Well, cities have been built in the floodplain since cities were invented. Uh, ancient Rome was built on a floodplain, or the Campus Martius at least was. Uh, pretty much any city you go to, they're like, we have a problem with flooding. Well, you're not special. Everyone has a problem with flooding. I suppose I'm getting a little behind myself now, so let's talk about the main focus of today's episode. We're going to build a couple of settlements of the Lenape tribe. Now, the Lenape were a uh, Native American tribe which existed from around New York City down to uh, Delaware. Uh, they were a matrilinear society, so heritage uh, passed down through the mother. Um, and they were a hunter-gatherer society, but they also had some agriculture, which I didn't realize when I recorded this episode. So I apologize for uh, portraying this culture as more primitive than it is. So anyway, what we're doing right here is we're putting in a little fishing village I'm putting some trees around the outside to emphasize the unspoiled wilderness part, of course, and just duplicating them around a bit. Anyway, I'm sure you're tired of my voice by now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with some royalty-free music, and then I'll talk to you some more later. All right. And I uh, apologize for the terrible terrain theme that changes late in the episode. Or maybe next episode, I don't remember. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so what we're going to work on here is sort of the, the main village in the area. Um, I, I, I'm not an expert in the precise layout of Lenape villages, but I saw a picture online of a, a big fortified village, and I thought it looked really cool. So we're going to we're going to try and do that here. I thought the result turned out pretty good. I don't know how historically accurate or anything it is. I am not a historian, but well, at least it looks nice. So we're going to put down a couple of these palisade walls. Uh, I don't think the proportion is that great, but I stuck with it. The end result looks nice. Um, then we're going to put down a couple wigwams outside of the walls because these kinds of settlement, any kind of settlement, you know, not everything winds up inside the walls. Walls are hard to build and uh, the wigwams are easy to build. So you don't want to move the walls just to let more people in, you know. There's still this campfire. And uh, what I've been trying to do with these fences is use them as like, they're like drying racks for, you know, drying skins or animal hides or what have you. And I'm gonna put down some wood piles and put down a couple canoes later. And after this, we're gonna do, I think two or three more villages and then they'll be on to the cinematic. So see you then. You can see I got a little bit lazy towards the end here. Anyway, uh, just before we go to cinematics, I want to say thanks for watching this first episode of Franklin. Uh, we're going to bring this city all the way into the present day over the next however many episodes we do. And along the way, uh, we're hoping to hit as many political issues as possible. I think we're going to, over the next couple of dozen episodes, we'll talk about eminent domain, zoning, the police, NIMBYism, YIMBYism, public housing, highways, redlining, railroads and transit, speculative development, political machines, eds and meds, construction and operation of essential municipal services, privatization of essential municipal services, financialization and commodification of housing, racism, class divides, LGBTQ issues, historic preservation, and everyone's favorite, parking. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if any of these topics may interest you. And please donate to my Patreon so I can get less crappy recording equipment and we can get rid of this persistent hiss in the background.
All right, on to cinematics.